Hey, welcome back to the Software Showcase. I hope you're returning here because uh, we're having such a great time doing it. Um, this week, again, you might notice some changes. Uh, studio standing up. No, it's actually the beard. I know. I fooled you. <laughs> no, Glenn, it's that they've put us in a rubber room finally, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, this week, uh, before we get started talking with our uh, guest today, we wanted to cover some of the things that have recently been going on that we want to give you a brief update on. Them. That's right. Yep. Uh, one of the first ones I wanted to talk about was actually BTT Writer. Um, you may or may not have seen an update from Craig Oliver uh, talking about a, a new release, I think 1.0.5. Uh, but why is that significant to you? Well, just with that simple release there, it actually accomplishes a couple things. If you are user, a user of BTT Writer, uh, either on the Android or the desktop, and you simply update your source text, if it has questions or notes, they automatically show up. Uh, but some of the other changes have actually helped some of our partners directly in the field. Uh, so we actually have a, a partner in Indonesia who was using the AYT uh, language and said, you know what, uh, thank you for the ULB, but we actually prefer and have uh, permission to use the AYT language. And can we use that instead of the ULB? Well, Writer now accommodates that. That's right. So previously, BTT Writer would only consider texts that the version was ULB. Mm -hmm. So basically the new uh, release removes that restriction. And in this case, like you said, it releases it so that we can use the AYT. Now, did you want to take a stab at pronouncing the what AYT stands for? Or shall I do that? Uh, al kitabi yang Terbuka? Sounds good. That's it. It's, yeah, a, yeah. it's an Indonesian version that was preferred. So anyway, if you need access to that or if you have something else that you want to use as a source text, it no longer is constrained to only ULB. Excellent. Uh, and also, there was an update to the USFM converter. Yeah. Um, so if you're a user of that, you'll be happy to know that now you can actually output directly into a Word doc file. Um, but also, it allows you some other parameters. So now you actually have control of the header, uh, the columns, the footer, and even the page numbers. Uh, so we're making these things a, a little bit more useful every time uh, to help make it as speedy and as comfortable to use uh, as an output as well as the what you're working on. Yeah, the other major improvement to the USFM converter is it is now supporting right to left languages, which previously uh, it often would not render properly. So mm -hmm. that took some some serious coding from Craig. I personally am excited about getting my English Bible uh, in right to left because I've read it from the beginning to the end and now I can read it from the end to the beginning, right? <laughs> No? Okay. See what I put up with? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's important. There are obviously a number of very important languages that uh, are read from right to left, and we can now render those. So at the moment, all those changes are available in the desktop app, which you would download from usfmconverter.bibletranslationtools.org. Perhaps Craig will put a, a note in the chat window so you can have that link directly. Um, we will be imp uh, implementing those, integrating those into the download pipeline off of Beal as well. Probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll get that built out. Um, the changes are actually already in production. Shout out to Ruben Swartz, who did much of that work. Uh, so there's some guy who needs to make some changes to Beal to actually make them work. I'm not sure who that guy is, but he's been so busy. So we both look at him? Uh, Come on no, here. It's actually <laughs> some other guy in this room. But oh. anyway, <laughs> it's been busy here at the ranch, and so I haven't had a chance to uh, roll those in, but we should have those out in the next week or two. So when you go to download scripture from Beal, you'll now be able to do right to left languages. And we've just improved a bunch of rendering things that used to cause it to fail. They now no longer fail and you'll get your document out and you can get it as a Word document, uh, like you said, and a few other things. Uh, we'll also be releasing PDF downloads on Bible in Every Language very Coming soon. soon. Yeah, but this soon. is not an official announcement yet. It's not even in private beta. It's actually, um, it's in the can, but it's not totally done yet. So. Excellent. Well, uh, before we get started with our guest, one other thing, um, we're going to be talking to Dr. Romer, who uh, we would love to have us here live, but it is 3 a.m., I think, his Roughly time. 3 a.m. So we time. actually went ahead and uh, had our conversation pre-recorded with him uh, a little bit uh, earlier. So uh, we're going to share that with you. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask them, but just know that Dr. Romer won't be able to, one, uh, to ask them at least live after we come back for that segment. Uh, so we'll be uh, going to that uh, just about. Yeah, yeah. In, in just a second. The, the reason that we're talking to Dr. Romer is that he uh, previously ran events that were all on site. And so we wanted to talk to him about how he's using technology during this time of the pandemic, what they're learning and what the results have been. And also we were really tickled to discover that Romer has a very uh, long-term interest in orality uh, and oral Bible translation. So that was pretty cool. 
Very cool. So you're going to watch the video now, uh, but hang around afterwards. We have, still have some more to say and, and actually uh, some, some extra features. Uh, so don't go away. Well, good morning, Dr. Romer. Actually, me now. Of course, uh, it's good. Good morning, but it's actually good evening. You're you're almost ready to go to bed there. But I think you win our prize for the guest with the most interesting background. For sure. Is that sure. right? Yeah. Well, good yeah. evening, Glenn and uh, Mark. Yeah, we are really glad that you're here, Dr. Romer. Thanks for taking this call early in the morning for us, late in the evening for you, because of course you live in the Philippines. So, um, Dr. Romer, for those who don't know you well, why don't you just tell us a little bit about uh, how you came to WA, and then we'll talk about what you do and what's coming up. Mm. Well, I, I came to WA sometime in 2018 when I was uh, supposed to uh, make a presentation, a partner's report and uh things were happening so fast but uh, uh in that gathering uh within uh, like uh 32 hours god turned me around and uh, redirected me to be involved with uh, wicklip associates so i was uh, the ceo of wicklip philippines uh, i got started in that work in 2009 but going back i was really into academics i was a seminar professor and prior to being a seminar professor, I was into radio with Paris Broadcasting Company for about 20 years. Wow. So radio, seminary, formal, non-formal education, then Wycliffe, Philippines. And, mm -hmm. and then 2018, God just moved me and turned me and, and brought me to Wycliffe Associates. So since then, I've been serving with uh, Wycliffe Associates. Very cool. Uh, I think many of us have stories of uh, long preparation that we didn't know was going to bring us and prepare us for Wycliffe Associates, and then we land here. So cool to hear that. So uh, what exactly do you do within the field development division? Well, uh, when I got started with Wycliffe Associates, I was handling the Pacific Regional uh, Division. And from there, I was moved to uh, handling a more of a global initiative for Wycliffe Associates, which is a great commission uh, Bible translation. And then uh, another uh, global in scope, which lends well to my background, is Strike. Uh, GCBT means great commission Bible translation. And the other one is Strike, which means uh, strategy, technology, resource in kingdom expansion. Although they're radically different, the, the audience of these two major initiatives are global leaders. GCBT targets the uh, church and denominational leaders, whereas STRIKE targets seminaries, presidents, and uh, educational leaders. And so uh, two different audiences, but the idea is to, ca to cast the vision for the Great Commission in Bible Translation. Very cool. OK, so what I hear you saying is strike is focused on those who are providing education, seminarians, presidents, things like that. And then GCBT is primarily for church leadership, but same That's same goal, which is to help them understand what Bible translation is, how they can do Bible translation and how Wycliffe Associates can equip them, train them and help stand alongside them as they're doing Bible translation. Yeah, that's correct. When we started GCBT in 2017 in Manila, we have participants from Africa, Indonesia, Papua mm. New Guinea, uh, uh, China, and several other countries. But then from 2017, that evolved into more GCBTs. Now I think we've had about 12 or 13 GCBTs that were conducted in several parts of the world. Wow, okay. So I don't know how it's going in the Philippines, but uh, on this side of the world, at least, we're having a little thing called a pandemic. And it's, of course, affected all of our travel. So yeah. uh, what's going on with GCBT and Strike? Previously, those were in-person events, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the first uh, on-site strike we did was in November of last year with the Asian Center for Missions in, in, in uh, Makati. ACM is the... Uh, missions arm of CBN Asia, Christian Broadcasting Network. Okay. And then the second one was in Nepal, which was a few months when everyone got into a lockdown. And so what okay. do we do now that we're all in a lockdown? And so we started off this month an online strike, a three-day event, training event for seminaries is now 
reduced to a 10 session uh, twice a week for 10 sessions, right? Twice a week. And, and we've been generating a lot of, we have about 50 participants wow. from, from South Asia. We have one from uh, Kuwait. We have mm -hmm. one from UK. We have one from uh, uh, South Korea. But majority of the participants were from Nepal, India, Bhutan, uh, yeah, uh, Bangladesh. Yeah. So this is what we're doing now. And people are receiving uh, the training that they need, which should have happened in an on-site training, but now it's online, but they're getting it. We're getting the same, the same messaging, the same objectives, but in a different platform. Are you using, uh, you're using Facebook Live for that or, or one of the other streaming services? Yeah, we do the the online strike on Zoom and then we feed it live on Facebook. So we have, yeah, we have the participants who listed on the Zoom call and everyone is free to attend the FB live and, and bring in their comments during the question and answer and interaction portion so they get to participate as well. Nice. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's great to adapt that way. I'm glad to hear that people are still attending. Is it uh, is it going to make it easier to do these more frequently because you don't have all the logistics of the on site event? I mean, can you reuse your content from one strike event to the next or are you producing them live as you go? It's just a curiosity since we're doing yeah. you know these the same way we're producing these and I'm always interested in how people are finding the best the most effective way to do it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, when we were thinking of, of like replaying the same material, but then we realized that for example, this is a more of a South Asia audience and their concerns are, are really different. And so if we do strike, the, and there is a request for strike for Latin America, because we, mm. we did GCBT Latin America, uh, when was that, January, and everyone was asking, when are we going to have strike in Latin America? And mm. so the guy, you can't replay the thing that you use for South Asia because the one Latin America should really be in Spanish. So, so we're, right. we're right. even asking, in Spanish translators and uh, inquiring with Zoom if they got to have a simultaneous Spanish translation. And 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 so I don't think we're going to replay. So we would have strike uh, a new strike ongoing session, I guess. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, and you'll keep it fresh that way too, right? I guess. Yeah. Nice. So uh, so on the seminary side, you're doing it as a 10 sessions uh so it takes five weeks i guess two sessions each yes yes and yes you have that going on right now you're in the middle of yeah one. yeah the we have last two sessions and uh and every time we we send them advanced materials okay. in preparation for the sessions they get their handouts uh, in advance they, they get all the videos i mean they they receive the uh, software showcase I got the short software showcase, converted it to a, a you know, a compressed it small and sent everyone a copy. And then That's we nice. also gave them links to uh, uh, to the YouTube channel on, on the tech side so they get to see that as well. And uh, I mean, everything that we have online from WA, we give them access and show them where to go and how, how to use them. Yeah, I, I have to tell you how excited we were to see that you had taken uh, Craig's presentation on some of the uh, translation tools and you had, you know, cut that in and made a session yeah. out of it. That was really we did fun. The right, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It just it was it was great to see that that content was reusable and to know that it had a broader audience than even we anticipated. So I like the I like the synergy and I like the reuse. It's great. That's true. So in fact, so in fact, in fact, Mark, what happened today just just now was after the session yesterday, because we integrated recorder and writer mm -hmm. to produce a dual output. So there was a separate session today of our participants to get a coaching coaching session with 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 our volunteer staff. And so you know, people are really wanting to really know how to use it and and they're good to go. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I think, you know, we all know that the task of Bible translation is far too large for Wycliffe Associates or really any, you know, U.S. based ministry to say we're going to do this whole thing ourselves. It's always going to be constrained if we have to wait for us. And so it's uh, really exciting to see this kind of initiative where you're really just giving the tools, giving the training, the encouragement and then saying, here's everything. Do it and also tell your friends. 
Yeah, in fact, I'll give one example, Mark Glenn. This, this president of a seminary in India, he said, I've worked with Bible translation organizations, but this is what we want. We have about 100 language communities, right? We are at the foothills of the Himalayas mm -hmm. and we're training church planters. And he's the one who was on the coaching session this afternoon. He said, we want to go, we want to do this. That's so good. That's Exciting. really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, we have worked on our software tools for a long time now. Glenn and Craig joined the team about five, six years ago. Six years ago? Yeah. And we, and we, yeah, and we really got serious about building translation tools. That was a change for Wycliffe Associates. You know, prior to that, the information technology team was basically just working on business systems, which we were happy to do. But with, uh, with some of the changes and uh, with Bruce's encouragement, we began to work on software tools. And it's really exciting to see them going places and being used in ways that we never would have anticipated. It's really gratifying for us. Obviously, we're most excited that the work is being done. We're most excited that Bible translation is happening. But it's also really, uh, it's just very cool for us to see the stuff getting used and uh, to know that it's making a global impact. So let's talk a little bit about GCBT. Same thing. It was an on-site event. Now you're you know, going to have to have make that virtual. What's that looking like for you? Yeah, this one, uh, this particular GCPP is very challenging because we're trying to reach uh, the Middle East. Mm. And, and, and so, you know, the, the population of that geography is really challenging. And so uh, it, the, the, the two day event for the GCPP Middle East was reduced to three hours. <laughs> so it was how do you channel a two day event into three hours? Yeah. And, and so I, I, I'm into curriculum design and, you know, and, and development, but, but a two day to three hours are very challenging. The format would, would change, but he, here's the thing. The leaders of the churches in the Middle East are, are on board already. We have about, I think, uh, 15 representatives already, and there are about 12 countries participating. And, uh, and, um, we just can't disclose some of those countries for obvious reasons. Yeah. Well, the three hours is really the opportunity for people to understand that they can do the work, but the the training and learning how to do the work and becoming equipped and all that doesn't have to happen in those three hours, obviously. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be developing the relationship online for connecting the name to the face and right. being able right. to talk. That's That's the thing. And then to nurture that, and develop it and then to welcome new relationship that would come into the partnership so yeah yeah so i'm uh, you know since we talked to tabitha last time my uh, my assumption is that you'll bring those people into being ready to do bible translation and interested will those uh discipling relationships then be handed off to uh translation services to run or will they sort of be a, a team a, a team effort from you all yeah well my role is still being the bridge in the relationship so i i just make myself available at every time i need it and you know ask for and but i will channel and hand off all these uh relationships and organizations like for now for for strike i think we have about uh for for organizations we have i think about 20 organizations being handed off and wow. a, a potential of 60 new starts for both mm -hmm. oral and written just from the strike initiative alone. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an easy assumption that, oh, pandemic, lockdown, people can't travel, Bible translation must have come to a screeching halt, and of course it hasn't. Yeah, because I think you're right. The nationals now say, okay, everyone is in a lockdown and this is our people, and so we might as well be equipped right now because we can't wait for outsiders to do this for us. And that's that's the mode right now. So we want to get it. We want to learn it. We want to do this. If you can, if you can help us, the outside can help us in in any way. We're welcome. We, we want that, but we want to do this now. So nice. That's really good. So uh, is there a thought that after the pandemic, which we're all assuming there's an after the pandemic, when we all go back to normal, that you'll resume doing these in person or will you have some combination of in person and virtual? Yeah, it would definitely be, I think, a hybrid of everything that we did before and what we're doing now and what's going to be doing. <laughs> There's going to be some 
you know, adaptation. Nice. So, Dr. Romer, I actually want to change directions a little bit. You mentioned in an email to us the other day that you have a long history in uh, orality and in oral Bible translation. And uh, I was really excited to hear that. I, I guess I didn't realize that that you did have that deep history, and I'm always interested in learning about that. So, you know, I we've opined in the past about oral Bible translation. I'd love to just get your thoughts uh, moving forward and just kind of see where your where your direction is as you think about it as a as a guy who is living overseas, much closer to the field than we are in Orlando. Yeah, well, uh, one of the sessions in the online strike was about orality, and I had uh, you know, three champions in orality. One is from, uh, I mean, one, two of them are stateside, but one is in 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 Manila. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, about ninety percent of the world are oral preference learners. Mm -hmm. uh, population seven point eight, seven, yeah, seven point eight. And a big portion of that are really geared towards oral. And with the rise of technology, uh, those who are highly literate still want to receive information, process information in the oral, uh, oral uh, modality, you know, like visual, seeing, talking. In yeah. yeah, but in primary oral cultures, those who are in the mountains and the villages, who they're the ones who really don't read and write. The way to go really is oral Bible translation from oral moving into written. And, and, and that's what we did in the last session of, of uh, Strike, is how to do an oral Bible translation using the recorder and for checking using VTT writer and then from oral recorded to written in the transcription. And so we had two outputs right away by integrating recorder and writer in one, in one, in one translation event. Nice, in one nice. translation opportunity mm -hmm. and so and, and everyone said uh, if, well, i'll give an example one participant in the strike session was uh, in 2016 participated in a mass workshop in nepal he's, he's from nepal and okay. he said the process you shared here dr romer is is really for oral cultures now i understand why why oral cultures don't get it in a way that we've had it in the workshop because the workshop was an oral Bible translation, but, what, but it was not orally framed. Yeah. Okay. You know, it was not presented in the way that oral cultures would process it. So I, I presented a new way of doing that. This is how oral cultures process it, because imagination and then relationship and internally say, and that, that's what I did. And so the, the we're getting, it's okay if I go say this, right? The, the consuming and verbalizing and chunking happen simultaneously. It's iterative. Mm -hmm. You know, linear thinkers who are highly literate can, can compartmentalize everything, but not oral learners. They have no, they have no written text to go back to and read. Everything's got, got to be imagined and mm -hmm. got to be internalized before they can even do blind drafting. Wow. And so this is this is happening now, and it was like it was jumping. Wow! Finally, we understand this is how we do all Bible translation. I mean, for the online strike, that's what's happening now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make such a good point there that it's not just a matter of hey, these folks don't read or they don't read well, and so we need a or we need a you know a Bible they can listen to, but it's really. Even the way that we think as sort of Western influence, highly literate culture, like that's shaped by that framework. And so that it's just a completely different framework, like you said, in terms of that. And I, I love that you point out that 90% of the world is, is oral preference learners. I always like to tell Americans, I know you're an oral preference learner because you like Facebook and you watch movies. Like <laughs> Facebook may be written communication, but it's actually oral communication written down, if that makes sense. It's a very oral conversational style. It's not. You are, you are an oral champion, Mark. You're an orality <laughs> champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. It's, it's why people prefer movies to books. This is the reality. I know we, you know, we have this idea that books are more virtuous than movies, sort of. It's kind of a, I don't know, I feel, I sense that. And I sometimes even feel that way, like, oh, it's better if I read a book than if I watch a movie. But the truth is, what do people do? People like to watch movies and they like to watch TV because we prefer 
the the inputs to come both visually and audibly and whatnot and, and anyway so yeah very cool yeah in fact there is an organization online and i was about to subscribe to that that, that they, they have a list of these are all the number of books and the kind of books that ceos would read and they came up with a gist and you don't get to read it you listen to it and you get right. it right away and yeah. it's, it's oral preference right there yeah, I, I've seen that same service. Yeah, they promise you you're going to get like 50 books a year, but in, in like, you know, however many minutes a month. Yeah. 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 Well, if you subscribe, maybe you can send me the, uh, the <laughs> maybe we could share a login. No, I'm kidding. We wouldn't cheat like that. But uh, yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to talk about that wasn't on the agenda, but it's been great to, to visit with you this morning, this evening. Well, uh, yeah, the. I mean, 2021 has been very challenging for us. I mean, I mean, 2020 has been very challenging for us, but I think I think the global pandemic that we're going through now is like a joke. Hmm. I mean, uh, Simon, you know, my former chairman with Wicklow Philippines, he, sh he shared me a, a link with uh, the school uh, business school in Canada. I said, I want to see this. I want to hear this. And this guy was the head of like innovation and he said, uh, the job that we're getting is 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 still a, an opportunity for all of us. And then he narrated about the discovery of, the, of the penicillin, discovery of Viagra. Everything was not intentional, but it became a a new thing for all of us. And so I think this this pandemic is still an opportunity for us. And what we're seeing with online strike is a new motivation of the churches of the global south to do things. As long as we are there to help, to be a help alongside, and they're willing to do it. So I think we're going to have more of this, and it will be more opportunity for Wiglop Associates to help advance the Great Commission and Bible translation. Yeah, I agree. I, I, what I love about Wiglop Associates is that from the beginning of the, of the pandemic and the lockdown, the attitude wasn't, oh, well, I guess this year's over. We just need to sit around and, and uh, just wait for this all to end. The attitude was we have an opportunity here to reframe and to rethink. So let's do that. Let's engage with this and let's. How do we continue doing this work? We have people who are waiting for the Bible. We can't just accept that we're going to do nothing and hope in a year it's back to it's back to the way it used to be. The way it used to be is never we're never going to go back to the way it used to be. Because when you have a, a global event like this, you're never going to get back to yeah. how it used to be. We don't want to get back to how it used to be. So yeah. Yes. yes. Very cool. Well, Dr. Romer, thank you for taking the time uh, this evening out of your out of your schedule. It's been really great to visit with you and uh, to hear a little bit more about what you're doing. And we look forward to seeing the successes as they come. Thank you, Mark and Glenn and Craig. <laughs> Silent <laughs> producer. Very good. Excellent. God bless. God bless. So Glenn, on uh, on watching that back, it struck me um, how much, what struck me was the talent that God has assembled into Wycliffe Associates over the years that was ready to tackle a whole new reality. Mm. I mean, just hearing Dr. Romer's background, knowing where he came from, and then seeing how he was able to adapt, move things virtually, not just try to do the same thing and put it online, but really to rethink, restructure, and I take advantage of those changes. To me, really hit me again on the on the listen back. What did what did you pick up that was that was interesting on the on the rewind? Well, I, I even liked him just talking about how he came to WA. I mean, anytime that, that we meet people like that, it becomes this praiseworthy testimony into itself. You're just yeah. watching God move through their lives as they as they are prepared to be able to join this family and 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 catch the vision. Um, but the the thing that struck me pun intended um was again that reminder of you know most often i think we we find a partner and we expose this idea of like you know you can um you can engage in bible translation it's like an aha moment and we are skipping over that step and going directly to the cemetery uh, sem seminary 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 so that uh people are already this is already baked into their idea of like, well, yes, we should do this. And this is going to be part of my my agenda, my goal for the people I love and care for, for this language. Um, so I, I think that's that's just a wonderful opportunity. And I'm glad we're, we're part of that. Yeah, just a reminder for those who are watching online, we do have uh, open Q&A. So feel free to submit those. It looks like we haven't had any yet. Yeah. 
Um, while we're waiting, you know, we had this uh, we had this thing happen, of course. So we we wrapped up that part of the interview with Dr. Romer, and we we just kind of left it rolling, and we were just kind of chatting, you know, as you do after the thing. And uh, then we just stumbled into this one one more brief topic, which I think you and I both felt like we've got to work this in. We've got to we've got to get the bonus content. Too good. In. So we've got a little bit of bonus content for you. That's uh, that's that's talking about the ways that Bible study and Bible translation can really go hand in hand. So I'm going to just uh, start that rolling here. Okay. Stay tuned. So just a couple of more minutes. And and come back again. We have more, more to talk to you about next time. He has a lot of time on his hands, but if you're training a church planner to work among, you know, an indigenous people group, being ready to not just plant a church, but also to help have a, you know, to work on a Bible translation at the same time seems like a, a natural synergy. Yeah. And I mean, church it builds, Bible it teaches. Yeah, it does everything. Church owned Bible translation. Uh, Tim asked that question, and I, I did reply to that question. But I think we we're, we still really need to, you know, fine tune what does that mean. And and my answer is this: Okay, you're working with church planters who go to Bibleless people group. What do they have? What do they do in common? I mean, church planters and cross culture workers. It's sharing God's word. And so if you, and if you train them in an oral Bible study, which which I did in, in our session, an oral Bible study leading to translation, and they have a map, and we're going to share that in session 9 and 10, and they have a map of scriptures, and we do have that, right? We have a map of all those scriptures, like number of chapters, number of verses, and then we get them boxes that they can check. They can complete scriptures. Using an oral Bible study, translation methodology and once they get the momentum now let's do this bible translation straight away we're not going to do oral bible study anymore because we know the process mm. so let us do this let's sit down and do this see that's what that's what i want to say and that is a tipping point once we get that tipping point all the people groups that have seen oral bible study leading to translation we can do this mm. We just show them the map here. I think I just heard you say that the the model is you're you're leading Bible study for people, but that Bible study is oriented in such a way that the end product isn't just discipleship, but it's also Bible translation. Yeah, of course. I mean, wow. yeah, unreached people group. You tell them the story about about we did Acts chapter nine, one to one to ten, a uh, one to nine, and then this last Thursday we did. 10 to 19. And if you go to an unreached people group with a Bible, you tell the story, and then they get the process of oral Bible study, and then, okay, let's record this. <laughs> and they retold the story three times, man. They retold it. What do you call mm. that in math? That's blind drafting. Mm. Right. <laughs> right. But they retold it with imagery, with internalization, and with application. And mm. scriptures impacted them right there. And that's what we're that's what we don't have in our oral map. We don't. And so we got to bring that in and they're getting it. Oh wow, this is you know. Hey, can we now record that? <laughs> they record it. And then the facilitator was a church planter who leads them over. Now can we also I will type that now? <laughs> you got it written. You got it. Nice. You got it oral, you got it written at the same time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Very cool. I'm just it's excited. excited. I, thank you for producing those products. You know, thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, we're it's so exciting to see them getting used like this. So now we have to figure out how to edit this little bit into the main body of the interview. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. So, so beyond the uh, the kind words that he said about the tools that we've been able to work on and the blessing that that's been to us, I don't know for you what really strikes me and it has struck me since the beginning of Mass is that as a group of translators walks through the process of mass and doing bible translation they become so incredibly equipped as believers to share into their community i mean there is no more in-depth bible study than doing bible translation right i mean this is time after time that's the story we hear yeah this There's is the good stuff. pastors who are working with their church are like this is the best bible study we've ever had yeah exactly exactly and so the team has We've put together the gateway language resources. Then we've got all of the notes and the words and all of that stuff. This is a tremendous, tremendous uh, set of tools. Of course, all free, open license and Creative Commons release and all that. 
it's just a tremendous uh, blessing. And Dr. Romer's enthusiasm is is just wonderful. Yeah, it's very. It makes contagious. me miss the Philippines. I saw love being there. That was great. <laughs> Can't Very wait to cool. return one day. Well, uh, let's talk about what's coming up. So yeah. actually, this is a special month in September because I think we are planning on having two more That's right. uh, software showcases in this month. Yeah, three um, Tuesdays. Next time that we meet, uh, we're planning to meet with Tony Tifoni, um, who will be talking about uh, his number of his roles, but mm -hmm. to my heart, uh, his inclusion in our team to help us with making the oral translation software and all the decisions. He's, he's uh, been a huge asset to our team. I'm really enjoying working with him. Um, and do you want to talk about the next one after that? Well, I was just going to comment, many people may not know Tony Zafoni, or they may recognize his name as having previously been on the Banquets team. Mm. Uh, but he did move into translation services about uh, maybe two months ago, that sounds more or less two, 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 three months ago. And uh, he's a great guy, long background in radio, broadcasting, and then, you know, long time on the banquet team and the events team doing the dinner banquets. So we know he has a real passion for Bible translation. And it's been, like you said, really fun to have him as a product owner for the translation tools, which means he interacts with our team and lets us know what the needs of the field are. So yep. he represents his team to our team. He's a, an important bridge in that. So we will have him on on the 15th, correct, two weeks from today. And more than likely during that conversation, we'll make references to tools and things that uh, we have not seen before uh, right. that we anticipate having a wider impact very soon. And so at the end of the month, we're going to come back and talk about some of those same tools uh, that should help some of the tools we got existing now with BTT Recorder, a new product uh, called Orcher um, that is uh, that we're using right now uh, with our partners um, for right. gateway and heart language translations. Yeah, so it's uh, it's the always dangerous live demo. We will actually mm. be live demoing on September 29th, which is not only my eldest son's 21st birthday, but it is also the end of the fiscal year. So I want to make sure that my boss sees that we've done our work for the year <laughs> and that we've had lots of success. So we are going to be demoing what I like to think of as the full ecosystem, which is source audio into the translation tool, do the oral translation, save the oral translation, put in all the verse markers, and then put it back into a place where it's safely stored and can be shared with others. The giant circle. We're going to have lots of demo. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> That's why we're going to have that demo in the rubber room in here with us. Yeah, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. You should be, but it's going to be great. It's actually going to be really good. There's uh, some really good tools coming out uh, here at the end of the month, and uh, not just because it's the end of the fiscal year. Uh, excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining us. Uh, we look forward to next time. Uh, God bless. Thanks. Good to see you all.